craft is not always an individual pursuit. Built during the depths of the Great Depression, Timberline Lodge is the result of contributions from scores of artists. It is a prime example of how craft draws inspiration from the landscape and can become part of the landscape as well. Timberline Lodge stands today as a national landmark, but it was born out of a very basic need. People wanted a place to ski. I was uh, a skier, of course. I had learned to ski in Montana in 1923, and so I was a pretty, pretty early skier. We used to climb up the trails to Mount Hood ski back down, and sometimes we do that twice in a day. The Depression came along, and President Roosevelt started the Works Progress Administration. The WPA put people to work, building highways, building tunnels, whatever had to be done. B.J. Griffith was the administrator and he decided, well, wouldn't it be a great idea to build a ski lodge and build it by hand? Well, the workers were brought up on a rotation basis with the WPA. To sign up for relief work, uh, they lost some of their uh, pride doing it, but that's what they had to do. They worked all during that winter in the snowstorms and the bad weather point was to put people to work during the Great Depression, not only carpenters and stonemasons and engineers, but also craftspeople, artists as well. They were just as much out of work as everybody else. Marjorie Hoffman Smith was hired to become the decorator, and she came up with the idea of flora and fauna, pioneer Indian Native American designs, and sort of bringing the outdoors inside. They felt they needed a woman's advice on certain interior details, which I think they did. At one time, I had as many as 200 people on my art project. Everything we did was made for use. We didn't blueprint it. We didn't have time to. We had people on relief, and we had to keep them busy. We had a few very fine artists. God, I can't believe uh, they're still here. It brings back memories, some very precious memories. Marjorie Hoffman Smith commissioned me to do these panels. They are incised linoleum colored with various layers of varnishes. The subject is outdoor camping in a rather lighthearted way. I like to do these little touches of animals and creatures who were uh, involved in this, this little guy. be anything like it again, but I can't really believe that I'm still here to see them. Timberline Lodge is a National Historic Landmark. Not only the structure of the lodge, but also all the furniture and the textiles all contribute to the historic qualities of the lodge. We consider the arts and crafts just as important as the stone and the wood and the rock. The restoration began in 1975 with the idea of replicating the original textiles. Marjorie Hoffman Smith kept all of her watercolor records. And from those records and black and white photographs, we figured we could 
recreate them. We have a little bit of freedom, and craftsmen like that little bit of freedom, but they're close replicas. Okay, one done. The WPA was sort of a moment in history. The proudest part that I see in all these years of me doing restoration is that we're the link between those generations. These rooms have been restored in the spirit of the original. Rawhide lampshade covers, little applique textiles. This ongoing restoration has caused the revival of a lot of crafts, uh, including and maybe most especially in blacksmithing. Making a ram's head fire poker. There aren't many pieces of ironwork in the lodge that we haven't duplicated at least once. The hanging lamps, handrails up and down the staircase, a lot of the door hardware. President Roosevelt came to dedicate the lodge on September 28th. 1937. It was a beautiful, beautiful day, and he uh, looked out, you know, with a great big smile to everyone. He said, Here I am on the slopes of Mount Hood, where I've always wanted to come. I am here to dedicate Timberline Lodge and I do so as a monument to the skill and faithful performance of workers on the rolls of the Works Progress Administration. Times have gone past us pretty much now, but this will remain as a, as a memento of that wonderful period when it was still green, there were still trout in the streams. And it will be certainly a, a sacred place for the 20th century.